Hello and welcome to this talk about the surge awareness in fluid transfer systems. Here we will explore pumping, pipe work plus more. We are expecting a great turnout today, so I'm hoping more people will join us soon. The webinar is being recorded actually, and uh, it will be made available later along with the presentation slides. I am Murat Islam, a member of the Process Industries Division Northwestern Center, and I will be managing this event and the Q&A session at the end. This presentation will discuss the design of dynamic flow systems using hydraulic modeling supported by theory and case studies. We will learn about ship loading, remote location transfer lines, complex grid systems, as well as heat exchangers. Please use the chat to submit your questions throughout the event and we will endeavor to direct them to our speaker later. If you are registered through the near you website, you will receive the presentation slides and you can also con contact us through that as well. Our speaker is an engineering director at Hydraulic Analysis Limited with over 20 years experience in the pipeline design and surge analysis, water hammer studies, and he has involved in over 300 case studies on a whole host of pipelines, networks and hydraulic systems in the oil and gas, petrochemical, water and energy industries worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, our speakers for this lecture, Dermot Gramley. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, for the for the uh, for the introduction, um, and thank you to the the members uh, for giving me the opportunity to present today uh, of the IKMA. So thank you very much. So today's uh, webinar agenda, um, we're going to give it a, a really brief introduction to. Uh, hydraulic analysis and myself um, and hopefully hopefully some of you may have probably heard of us and maybe even some of you worked with us on projects. Um, we're going to give an introduction to some of the main aspects of surge. We're going to use some case studies and examples to further ex explain some of the concepts of surge analysis. We're going to give a brief review um, of what a detailed surge or hydraulic study m may be carried out, why you might uh, consider um, carrying out surge analysis. Um, it's a, a, a approximately 45 minute presentation, so we may have to move uh, quickly through some of the slides. However, if there are any questions, we can come back to them at the end and I, I, hopefully a copy of the presentation or a video of the presentation will will, will be made available at, at the end. Um, so quick introduction to Hydraulic Analysis Limited and HAL. Um, so as, as Murat said, my name is Dermot Grumley. I'm an engineering director at Hydraulic Analysis Limited. I've, I'm a chemical engineer and I've, I've worked uh, with, with HAL for, for over 20 years now. Um, Hydraulic Analysis Limited themselves are a dynamic simulation consultancy with over 45 years of experience. Um, HAL and Simulation Software Limited, SSL, are part of the Hydraulic Analysis Group. So SSL um, are uh, the, the the arm of the company that are uh, um, that that are used to 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 develop the software um, and the software we we use is, is called VerySim um, and it's also used for real time uh, world for optimization and leak detection. So hydraulic analysis it's a, we're the world's leading pipeline hydraulic and surge consultancy um, and we've carried out well over ten thousand steady and unsteady flows. Uh, studies on pipelines um, all over the world. Um, our team is made up of over 30 engineers and we've got offices at five locations. Um, and we, yeah, we've got, we operate in over 50 countries and have an in-depth knowledge of experience of, of various, uh, various different industries. The, the main capabilities really are steady state modeling, surge and transient analysis, site monitoring and troubleshooting, leak detection and real time systems. So I've got, there's a, this is a, a brief overview of, of our of our services that we offer in, within the site services, desk based services, training services and innovation services. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, but they, they will be available on the slides uh, if, if anybody wants to, to have a look at what, what we offer. So we're going to the main reason for um, for, for talking today is really to give an introduction to, to surge analysis. So what is surge? So surge is a, a rapid change in fluid flow that leads to high or low pressures um, tr within a system and this can lead to significant piping forces. Surge is typically generated during a, a shutdown or a startup event within a system. 
the reason why you might carry out a surge analysis is it, it allows the prediction of, of high and low pressures on, on piping forces within the system. It can eliminate costly problems before construction and it can identify reasons for damage or operating problems and, and it's very it's a very powerful tool to dem to demonstrate solutions and, and, and come up with uh, with remedial actions. Um, surge analysis is is, um, is is one of those activities where it's, it's very easy for us to to demonstrate the impact of it and we've got a whole host of, of pictures of, of uh, pipeline ruptures. Um, let's just flick through a few of those there. We've got a whole host of examples of, of, of pipelines coming off their supports due to transient effects. Um, we've got uh, small pipeline uh, leakages due to movement at, at, T, at T locations. We've got ruptures of pipes on uh, on, uh, on riser pipes and on platforms. So we've got a whole host of different uh, good examples of, of where surge um, can be a problem. You can see here we've got other pictures of, of valves failing due, during a, a closure event. So um, to really go, go on and explain um, surge uh, and, and, and transient effects within the system, um, it's, it's, it's easy enough to, to do some very simple calculations to kind of work out what sort of surges you might get. But if you if you want to really um, model the these details in, in um, and understand that the full impl implications of transients within pipelines, anything from simple to con complex hydraulic systems, you would you would undertake a full transient hydraulic uh, system. Um, uh, study where you would you would gener generate a simulator or a model and then you would simulate the dynamic response of that uh, of the system. The software uh, you would use should ideally accommodate the effects of variable wave speed and variable product properties. Um, our our uh, our software uh, generally does use the method of characteristics, and there is a so other software available that that would use other methods. However, the method of characteristics um, is is seen as the the the, the most accurate um, software tool, and it's used to calculate transient behavior within a method of solving partial differential equations. In the model, the pipeline is broken down into a number of discrete calculation points, where the distance between all the calculation points on the pipeline will be fixed. Now, I don't want to go into this in too much detail because there's there's, there's people who have spent years researching this, but. Um, it, it, it's just an example of, of the sort of grids that are put together and the complexity of the models that that uh, that, that that can be can be simulated. Surge in surge terms, uh, surge is generated or is a short term pressure change caused by a rapid velocity change. So the magnitude of a change is, is generally proportionate to, to velocity change. So a good example or a good rule of thumb really is that if you have a, a one meter per second change in water uh, in, in water velocity, you could potentially generate up to 10 bar uh, rise in pressure. Um, these dynamic pressures uh, changes are called surge pressures uh, or water hammer due to the the, uh, the the sound you can sometimes hear when when pressure uh, travels up and down systems. Um, so the primary causes of surge are anything from valve closures to pump startups, pump shutdowns, uh, or, or even air valve operation. So we, it's, it's, we can't really talk about surge unless we talk about uh, the, the, the Joukowsky equation, which is really the cornerstone of, of, of surge calculation, and it's the cornerstone of what we use within our within our software package. So generally speaking, the the, the, the pressure change in meters um, is is a is a result of the velocity change within your within your fluid multiplied by your wave speed over a gravitational constant. Now the two important factors here are the velocity change and the wave speed, which we'll cover uh, next. So the, the wave speed itself uh, has four main components. Um, it's the effective density of the fluid, the liquid compressibility. Uh, the pipe distension, but also the free bubble content. Um, so one of the important factors um, which you need to consider when you're using a, a software tool is is whether it's a, a fixed way speed calculator or a variable way speed calculator. Now within our within our software, we we use a, a variable way speed platform, and that means that you're 
your your actual bubble content within the, the fluid will change um, as your pressure changes within the system. Um, some software packages use a, a fixed wave speed approach, um, which can be a little bit more conservative. Um, however, we, we, we feel that um, actually modeling the uh, the variable wave speed aspect of, of the, the calculation is, is important. So just give you a, a really brief uh, uh, idea of what will what, what the, the percentage or retained air within the system does based on pressure. You can see that the with, with a, a zero percent uh, retained air within your liquid, you you have a wave speed of approximately 1400 meters per second. And as you you increase your percentage um, uh, retained air within the in the liquid, your wave speed drops. And that's important when you when you come to looking at the hydraulic aspects of the system. So if we were modeling a fixed wave speed approach, the Operating, although the operating pressure within this simple pipeline would change, um, your wave speed would stay the same. However, within our using very similar within a, a, a variable wave speed calculator, your, your wave speed would be higher at B because of your your higher uh, operating pressure um, than it would be at C, and that will impact on the hydraulic response of the system. So that's just a, a summary of that graph, which states that during steady pumping, your wave speed at at B will be the will be the highest um, because your your free gas content will vary with pressure, um, and therefore your Joukowsky's equation is valid at any moment in time at any location al along the pipeline. But using a variable wave speed um, will will give you a more accurate uh, representation of of your hydraulic response within the system. Um, another important factor to, to bear in mind is, is to understand the hydraulic response of the system is to understand how long it takes your, your wave to travel from one end of the system to another. And that's, some, and that's known as pipe period. So a pipe period um, is a function of the wave speed and the pipe length within the system. So in this case, it's two times the, the length of the system over your wave speed will give you an idea of how long it takes a pressure wave to travel from one end of the system to another. So you can already kind of understand that employing a, a variable wave speed um, simulator will allow you to, to give, give, give yourself a better um, uh, feel for the actual correct uh, wave reflection time that will, will occur within your system. Um, it's really critical in understanding that the, the system response. Um, if a surge event occurs within a time a, a time period shorter than the pipe period, then it is considered to be to be considered as instantaneous. So a very fast acting valve, if it closes um, over the, the within a, a pipe period, it's said to be instantaneous. So I'm going to just use it next few slides just to, to really give you a, a basic uh, feel for what happens when you you close a valve. So in this this um, simple example, we've got a reservoir with a pipeline uh, traveling at a certain velocity. Um, and at T is equal to zero seconds, that valve closes instantaneously and we get a surge pressure rise um, as a result of your Joukowsky uh, rise. And that surge pressure rise then will, will begin to travel back through the pipeline at your wave speed. So here you can see that the, the wave has gone from the closed valve traveling back through the pipeline has come three quarters of the way back through the pipeline. And you can see that your, your Joukowsky surge pressure rise as a result of your wave speed, um, uh, which is proportional to the velocity that you're bringing to rest. This is your, your wave, which is reflected then at one and a half times after the valve closure. It's reflected back off the, the reservoir um, and your, your the, the, the speed at which the wave continues to travel is is again is based on the wave speed. And when it after so that at t is equal to 2.225 times your your length is past one pipe period. So it's gone from the closed valve to your reservoir and back to the closed valve. Um, and so that is your instantaneous closure. And then the subsequent surge pressure uh, wave that travels will will be a reduction on the initial operating condition. And this is the, the, the transient or pressure profile that you would generally see. You can see the Hall squiggle, which we, we we know it as. And you can see you've got a generally you've got a, a surge pressure rise following a, a closure event, followed by the, the down surge as it <clears throat> as the wave uh, passes through the system. So during a typical surge event, if you wanted to 
use it as a rule of thumb to kind of get a feel for what sort of uh, change in pressure you might get by bringing a certain velocity to rest. You might take, uh, you might look at an instantaneous closure where, um, and use this equation to estimate your, 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 um, your, your rise in pressure. However, there is, there is a, um, the, the closure will be less severe when you're talking about an instant or a partial closure of the valve because it's closing over longer than your, your, um, your pipe period. So therefore you can use that equation to, to give you a better estimate. Um, and then extended linear closures over longer than two times your, your, your length or your pipe period, then you can use this equation to give yourself a, a, a rule of thumb calculation. Now to go to um, go on to um, some case studies, which will hopefully give give some sort of working examples of, of typical uh, surge aspects. And I'm going to use uh, ship loading systems to talk about surge pressures due to valve closures, rapid pressure transients due to pump trips and why pipe support design uh, is important. So we would typically look at ship loading systems um, and, and what they did, they generate transfer pipelines to and from uh, storage to, to ships via road, rail or pipelines. Um, these sort of systems uh, are you have variety type uh, in, in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. And you're looking at small systems through small jetties to, to long distance uh, hoses um, connected to buoys, to ship to, uh, ship, to ship links. Uh, to long distance jetties that uh, or, you know, are kilometers long and, and, and lend themselves to, to typical surge events. So the reason why you, you would model these types of systems from a surge analysis point of view is, is that you're always trying to maximize your transfer rates. So the higher flow rate you have, the higher velocity will be. So therefore, the more impact that will have from a surge event. You need to ensure uh, our operating conditions remain within acceptable piping limits. And we need to verify that the pipe supports are adequately designed to, to take the, the sort of surge impact that we will be simulating. So typically speaking, these are the sort of scenarios we, we would consider. So um, ESD1 shutdown events, ESD2 shutdown events, pump trip scenarios, loading arm or, ho or, or hose marine breakaway coupling closures and undetected chip valve closures. So I'm going to use a, 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 a loading system that we've looked at uh, over many years, and it's quite a, a lar it's large system um, now that looks at transferring uh, LNG in this scenario from, um, from storage tanks through dual loading lines to ships um, through a, a series of, of, uh, of, of jetty pipe work. Um, what we're going to look at from this scenario is, is how the system operates when we're closing the ship valve. So it's one of the, the, the well, the, one of the vital cases that we use from a design point of view because closing the ship valve will bring your flow to rest over a, a quick period of time. So when you look at a valve closure event, um, as we've seen before, when you close your valve, you will get a surge pressure rise on the upstream side of the system. But um, consequently, you will also get a subsequent down pressure rise on the downstream side of the system. Um, I've got a, a model here of this particular system. Um, and in order to protect surge here from a valve closure event, we we were requested to design the, the pressure relief system. But this this initial scenario I'm going to show you is, is the impact of closing uh, the ship valve against the full loading flow rate. Um, and you can see on the right hand side, I've got a, a chart showing the, um, the stroke position of a ship valve that will now begin to close. As that closes, it's bringing the, the loading velocity to rest, which is the red line. You can see the red line is starting to close, uh, starting to decay as a result of the closing valve and the resultant surge pressure rise immediately upstream of the valve is rising uh, proportional to that drop in velocity. You can see there we've we've closed the valve. Our surge pressure rise um, in this case uh, rises to just below 30 bar. Now, one of the interesting features of a, of a loading system of, of this sort of nature is that the, the onshore pipework um, will probably, in this case, I think was rated to 30 bar. But one of the, the limitations on these types of systems is the ship. We don't always know what sort of pipe uh, rating the pipework on the ship will have. Um, therefore, uh, it's likely to be class 150. Um, so therefore, it's, it's rated to a, a lower 
uh, level than the rest of the system. So in this undetected ship valve closure scenario, we're, we're really protecting this area here, which is the ship pipework um, during this event. If, if we're rated to class 150 on uh, rating on the ship, you can see our surge pressure rising up to close to 30 bar will be. So the, the client in this instance um, asked us to come up with a solution to protect the, the, uh, the system from a ship valve closure. Um, and they've employed a series of pressure relief valves that will open on rising pressure to limit the surge pressure rise. So on the next slide, I'm just going to demonstrate the impact of, of the PSV in operation for the same scenario. So you can see again, the valve's closing, We're bringing the flow rate to rest. You're gonna see the, the resultant surge pressure rise, but what we will see this time is that the, 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 the pressure relief valves will open on rising pressure, will divert flow away from the system. So in other words, we're, we're bringing the valve to rest against a, a, a lesser flow rate. Oh, apologies, I, I started the wrong video there. Just bear with me one second. So this is the scenario where the PSVs will, will operate. So we've got the valve closing. The POVs will, will begin to open. You can see there the POVs are opening, relieving flow, taking flow away from the system and, and your surge pressure rise and previously without the uh, without the relief, we're seeing 30 odd bar at the ship. Now we're bringing we're bringing surge pressures below 20 bar. So, so the, the, the sur a surge analysis in this sort of situation was was required because of the the, the, the calculations that we need to to um, to look at um, and sizing of the PSVs. Another scenario here we consider is a is a, is a pump trip during a pump trips. Sorry, this is the this is a good example of a of a. a a system that um, ruptured during a, a ship closure event. So you can see there we're, we're loading through a loading arm onto a ship um, and the captain will cl close the ship in this instance. Um, I think in this particular scenario, the, the ship uh, valve was quite a, a, a severe closure uh, event and that generated, I'm going to play that video again, that generated a surge that caused a rupture on the ship. So it's a good example of, of why surge analysis is, is very important. So using a, a, the same um, the same example, uh, same system as a case study, uh, pump trips, um, even though they don't necessarily generate significant high pressures um, in the downstream system, what does happen within pump trips is we get a rapid decay in pressure through the system. Now that low pressure surge, which I'm going to demonstrate here, travels through the system and even though we don't we're not exceeding any maximum uh, design pressure rating of the pipework the change in in pressure um, lends itself to um, out of balance piping forces um, so you can see there we have a trip tri the trip in the pump causes the, the rapid decay of two to three bar over a very short period of time within the system and the low pressure wave will travel through the pipework now if that pipework isn't um, sufficiently supported then you may well get pipe movement due to the, the, the resultant forces that are generated in the piping. So one of the outputs of a surge analysis is to is to provide the detailed out of balance forces uh, that we will see at every change in direction within the piping. Um, and so you will want you will need to make sure that the, the piping is supported to withstand the sort of transient impact that we're going to see on this sort of system. So I've got loads of examples of of, uh, of of systems that we've worked on where um, pipe movement uh, was, was seen as a result of, of a transient event. In this particular example, this is your, your loading line and that was sat up on your on the support and that uh, yeah, mo moved off the supports during some transient event. Same there. You can see movement of pipe as an LNG system where we saw some movement of pipe work. So generally speaking on loading systems or similars of this or systems of this type of of, uh, um, of this type of size, um, you, you would consider surge analysis if you are thinking about increasing the loading or unloading rates. 
uh, to ensure that the ESD shutdown events uh, actually protected the system. Um, to, if you were unsure of the of the characteristic of the valve uh, on your system, then you would carry out surge analysis to ensure that any type of valve that was we were using would be would be acceptable. If, particularly on this type of system, system, if there was no shipshore link, um, you would carry out a surge analysis. Uh, for, you would use a surge analysis for designing pipe supports, for optimizing the protection systems, um, evaluating loading arm specifications. And if the ship pipe work and the SPM pipe work has a lower rating than the rest of the system. So we're going to go on to, on to long distance pipelines. Um, and in this, this, this example, we're going to introduce line pack and the concept of concept of understanding the hydraulic response of the system and using pump trips to protect against that line pack. So um, Typical transfer systems uh, that we consider would be anything from sort of typical long distance cross country pipelines to produce water pipelines, water injection systems, mega injection, condensate pipelines. And one of the one example of of a, 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 a pipeline system that we've modeled in a lot of detail would be the, the Fortis pipeline system. And it was one of the, the first uh, oil and gas pipelines that we modeled back in the sort of 60s and early 70s. And it's uh, we're still using the model today. Um, for transfer of pipelines, um, line pack is, is something that um, should be considered. So it's common in long distance pipelines and it's a function of flow rate um, within the system and the characteristics of the pump. It occurs if, if, you, if you stop your flow in less than a pipe period. So your, your Joukowsky rise, which you will see when you bring the flow to rest, is followed by a gradual packing of the system by the pump. The, pro the reason why this happens is because of the distance in the of the system, um, the pump, the, 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 the effects of the valve closure at A in this example aren't felt at the pump. So you get, get the pump continue to operate as if the, the system is, is open and passing flow. Um, and thus, this is where this uh, initial Joukowsky is generated, followed by this packing effect that you get within long distance pipelines. So just as an example, I'm going to play this scenario. So we've got a just a, a comparison between a five kilometer and a 50 kilometer pipeline. And in this scenario, we're closing the, the two valves at the, the same time. You can see the, the valve is, is closing. We're going to see the pressure here is the pressure immediately upstream of the closing valve. And the pressure here is the speed at which that wave travels back to the, the system. So the red line is your is your short system. So you can see your Joukowsky rise happens relatively quickly. Um, the pumps, due to the, the shorter pipe period, the pumps um, slowly uh, reach the no-flow header uh, and it sits there at this um, you know, peak surge pressure generated by Joukowsky quite quickly. In the longer system, you can see we've got a, an initial Joukowsky surge pressure rise followed by this continual um, packing of the system as the, as the surge wave continues to, to travel upstream. Um, and so we, we will see this on, uh, continual packing until the, 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 the pressure wave um, reaches, reaches the valve. So you can see there we get a continual packing and that will continue to happen until the low pressure wave, you can see there travels back to the closed valve. I'll just let that play now, you can see here. The surge pressure wave is continuing to travel back. The pumps still don't know there's been a valve closure. We're still still continuing to pack the system. And when that's uh, when we reach one one pipe period, now you can see the the, the packing effect stops, um, and we start to to stabilise the surge pressure wave. So you can see there, by taking into account the packing effect, um, really gives you a, a much better feel for the the hydraulic response. Um, of the long distance pipeline. Um, here's an example of a, a long distance pipeline. You can see it's a quite a complicated um, uh, system. It's over 120 kilometers long. This, this scenario I'm going to show you is the use of pump trip to protect against this packing effect. So as you can see, in the, as you saw in the previous slide, if we can trip the pump sooner, we will limit that packing effect. So in this scenario, can play it there. We're closing a valve at the downstream end of the system. You can see there the low pressure. I'm sorry, apologies. I wanted to pause that. Let's just play it again. So 
So in this scenario, we generate this. Uh, we, we closing, we're closing a valve at the downstream end of the system, and this generates a surge traveling upstream. Um, and what, uh, in order to protect against the line pack effect um, within the system, a pump trip was employed um, shortly after the isolation of the downstream system to to limit the continual uh, packing effect of the of the system. So therefore, the pump trips um, before uh, to a pipe period is seen. So you can see on the upstream side of the system, we're still getting some uh, packing effect here as this wave travels upstream. However, because we've we've tripped the pumps quite quickly, the low pressure wave is 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 seen, and that will limit your 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 continual packing effect. If if we allowed if we continue to allow the pump to pack this system, we would see the the line pack would would be would greatly exceed the peak pressures we were seeing here. So this is an example of the use of a pump trip to protect against line pack within a long distance pipeline system. If if a pump trip is not acceptable due to maybe distance or or the fact that uh, you, you want to consider uh, an undetected closure on the downstream end of the system, um, other relief mechanisms such as a, a, a surge um, a surge relief valve um, can be employed uh, immediately upstream of the, the, the closing uh, valve, particularly if your high pressure trips are ineffective. Um, these are high 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 capacity relief valves. Um, and you would undertake a surge analysis to 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 uh, to optimize the size and the location of of the of the relief valve required. So on, on these sort of typical transfer systems, um, you 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 would carry out a surge analysis to really understand understand the hydraulic response of the pipeline. Uh, you would look at you would consider um, a surge analysis to evaluate the startup and shutdown procedures and specify pipeline isolation valves in terms of closure characteristics and closure rates. Um, a surge analysis is a, a very good tool to optimize your protection systems, whether you are employing HIP systems, PSVs, or surge relief valves. Um, the use of a, a surge analysis is important to, to really optimize the protection uh, mechanism. Um, one of the, the, the good aspects of, of Verisim is, is, is evaluating pressure control within a system, and, and, so, and we can model quite complex control loops, um, which can be used to protect systems as well. And again, with, with most systems, Designing pipeline supports um, is important. Um, I'm going to move on now to to large water mains. Um, and the reason why I'm talking about this is is really to look at and introduce the impact of of not just high pressures that we see within systems, but all, of also low pressure transients. Um, um, and low pressure transients can be protected due to uh, using air valves um, and accumulators and surge vessels. Um, so this is a, a typical undulating water main where we have various high points within a system. Um, and during a, a, a pump trip event, you will the pressures within this sort of system will drop quite quickly. Now within water mains, we, we need to be careful about dropping below certain thresholds because it, because if it's a potable, potable water system, anything below any pressures below subatmospheric within that pipeline uh, can potentially draw or ingress air and impurities into the pipeline. So we need to make sure that um, um, air valves uh, are, are, are used to maintain minimum pressures within the system. And move quickly on, but air valves will open when, when pressures um, within the system fall below subatmospheric conditions. Um, so here's an example of a, a pipeline system where we, we've employed air valves. So we've got a, a pumping system here. Um, we're going to trip the pumps on the system and the pressure is going to quite quickly fall. Um, and we've got a minimum threshold here. So we want the, the valves to, to maintain um, close to atmospheric pressure. You can see there when we trip the pumps, the, the pressure falls and the air valves at certain locations at these high points will open to prevent us seeing vacuum conditions within our pipeline. One of the important aspects of this one is we, the air valves will need to be sized correctly uh, to allow sufficient air into the system, but also to to prevent um, secondary surge impact. Now I'm going to continue playing this val uh, video, and you're going to see that we've protected against the minimum pressures. But what you're going to see is following subsequent pressure reflections and closures of the uh, of the air valves due to the the, the downstream. Uh, high pressure within the, the, the system, the air valves close and you see a secondary surge impact as those air valves slam closed. 
So that that's essentially happening because we're, we're generating a reverse hydraulic gradient. So we trip the pumps, a low pressure wave travels through the system. Um, when the low pressure wave reaches the, uh, the downstream reservoir, we generate quite quickly generate a reverse hydraulic gradient, which then pressurizes the system and, and causes air to be vented quickly and the air valves slam closed. So what, one of the important aspects of a, of a surge study is to ensure that the, the sizing of these air valves protect against minimum pressures, but also that the venting capabilities are such that when we close these air valves and vent the system, we aren't causing secondary surge uh, impacts or events that are occurring. Um, another another way to protect these types of systems is with a, a surge vessel. So I'm just going to show an example of a surge vessel of a system without a surge vessel. So this is a simple A to B main where we're going to generate quite a high reverse hydraulic gradient when we trip the pumps. So this is our hydraulic grade line. We trip the pumps, low pressure wave travels through the system. We fall to um, low levels. Because of the, uh, the setup of the system, we get a reverse hydraulic gradient passing back through the system. And you can see that reverse velocity generates a secondary surge, which is quite high within the system. And it, it, there's no dampening effect uh, here. And th those sort of pressures we see um, would be damage, damaging to the pipeline. So when we employ a surge vessel, we would size a surge vessel to give us protection. That will be situated close to the pumping station. And when you trip the pumps, you see a far more dampened uh, low pressure surge that travels through the system. So that drops through the system and it will just quite nicely sit at that location there. So really the impact here is, 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 and, and the, the reason we'd carry the surge analysis here is to optimize the air valve design, size vessels within potable water systems, and also optimizing check valves. So um, the last, the last really bit, bit I want to, to go through, and I'm conscious of time, so I'll, I'll go through this very quickly, is to uh, give you a very quick introduction to real-time models and where the future of transient analysis is heading. Um, Really, real-time systems enables a, a live picture of pressures and flows uh, and water sources at every location within the network to be observed. And it's very important, particularly if you're looking at uh, large, expansive systems. I'm going to just quickly show you two examples of, of, um, of real-time systems that we've currently got uh, or currently simulating. So we've got a, a real-time system of the Dubai Water Network. Um, and we've built um, a full network or a full model of this. And so you can see it's quite a complex model. Um, so that's the piping network. Um, so what we're doing is we're taking real live data from pressure transmitters and flow readings from site, and uh, they're being read directly into the model. And then the model is, is showing any any issues or, or, or any problems or differences between real time operation and what what sh we should be predicting. So you can see there, the, it's actually a very very complex model with thousands thousands of pipes. Um, what we're doing is we're linking this into to the real pressure and flow readings that we're seeing within the system. Um, it, it allows us then to, to generate heat maps and, and calibrate and show exactly how the, the network is modeling uh, or is, is operating. Another example of this is, um, is a digital twin or, or a real time system we have. Um, we've started modeling within, uh, within some of the uh, district metered areas in, in London. Um, so the, the, these are these are in some cases quite large areas, um, and we will build a twin based on existing sort of GIS data that's available within the system. Um, this particular twin was tr we were trialed to investigate the, the high uh, historic leakage rates which reoccur within the system, and try and get a feel for why we're seeing high pressures of, um, within the system and understand the impact of the the pressure transients. So we, we built we built this model directly from the client's shape, uh, shape files, and the and the, the the model is driven by the the metering data that we can get from the system. So in this particular system, we've got eight uh, pressure readings or information that's being fed into the this, the system, and we've got three direct DMA or, or uh, flow data um, that's providing flow into the air into the the system. By putting together a digital twin, we can quite quickly uh, generate simulations of, of flow demands um, at particular times, um, 
particular areas where we're seeing high demands at certain times within the system, uh, particular areas where we're seeing pressure transients and areas where we're seeing high pressure tra transients. So this really gives gives our client a really good visual display of exactly what's happening within their within their system. Beforehand, they only had an idea of of, of how the system was operating based on our eight pressure loggers. Now we can show them exactly what's happening from a, a transient point of view um, and a steady state point of view throughout the uh, throughout the, uh, the a normal or typical day. Um, one of the interesting facts with this one is there was a, uh, a an area where there was large areas of leak, historical large areas of leakage, um, and, and what the digital twin was able to to protect to show was it, it showed a, a particular pressure transient that was occurring regularly. Um, as a result of of uh, PRVs closing during a um, a low demand scenario, and you can see we've simulated and shown exactly how that pressure transient transmits through the system. Interestingly, down some of the legs, the pressure dissipates, but in this area here, the surge pressure rise is, is significant enough that that causes some uh, historical uh, damage, and and hence the reason why. It's in uh, this was a, a, the area of, of high leakage rates and, and, and continual repairs over a three year period. So we were able to use the, the, the model to come to to change the operation of the system during low demand scenarios to protect protect against the, these pressure transients. Um, OK, I'm, I'm, that's come, come to the end of the, the presentation. It's searching 45 minutes now, so I hope I haven't rushed to through too many of the slides too quickly. Uh, but yeah, over to to Mural again for uh, any questions um, that that might come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. It's been a, it's been a great presentation, really quite in informative as well. Um, I've got a few questions to pass on to you here, but uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you again for this talk. Uh, we obviously learned a lot about the hydraulic modeling, the pipeline design. Uh, it sparked some 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 questions. Obviously, um, I will have my own questions as well. Hopefully, okay. and maybe more will come in in the meantime. Um, I will remind the attendees: please submit your questions on the on the chat again. Uh, if you have further inquiries, you know you can contact us through the contact form in the registration website as well. Or please uh, reach uh, Damit if if you wish to con contact him as well, um, and we will try to direct in the correct path. Um, here. I've got a couple of questions. Let me just bring them up again. So first question was um, quite early on in the presentation, actually, and uh, they sort of asked about um, if um, in your surge analysis reports, how are the out of balances forces basically typically calculated on a pipe supports with the directional changes, etc. I mean, you touched on it obviously a little bit, but can yes. you sort of give some sort of a summary again? Is that yeah, possible? Sure. So um, yeah. We will provide, generally speaking, we will provide a, a peak force um, that we see as a result of that pressure transient, and we, we will give that force, um, th that transient force acting in the axial di axial direction, um, uh, axial plane between two pipe bends. So we will we will generally within a system provide. Um, if I just probably easier to show you that if I just flip back to the the, the chart, so. A good example would be um, the piping. So, so there's a, a network system there, and we will provide the out of balance forces at every change in direction between those. So we, we label up no points. So we will give, say, for example, using nine between nine, eight, and nine, the pressure transient. We will generate a, a pressure differential that that's seen between these two locations. We will then. Um, Calculate the force as a result, result of that as a result of that pressure transient, um, and we will tabulate that uh, in a table. Generally, just giving the peak force um, that we see as a result of the uh, the difference in pressure, but also the difference in velocity. Um, now we will give that as a, a a maximum absolute value. However, if if the stress engineer um, wants more details we can provide the, the force uh, as a as a pre as a force times history chart um showing the maximum and minimums um occurring over the, the time frame um or we can provide it in whatever format is required but generally speaking we will provide uh, a out of balance the, the the isometrics annotated like that and we provide a resultant table giving the peak force being generated uh, between each each set of nodes 
Excellent. Thank you. But if Thank if you. any more if if there's any more details or or examples of that is required, then yeah, just drop me an email, and I've got plenty of examples I can kind of demonstrate uh, how we normally approach uh, providing piping forces. Perfect, Dan. Thank you very much. Uh, some more questions also coming in. Um, another question: um, During pump trip scenarios, how do you account for potential high point vapor cavity formation and closure? So, uh, so our our software. Um, uh, sorry, I'll just look to the end. So our, our software will um, we will calculate. Um, one true vapor point within the model. So if if we trip the pumps, um, particularly in something like an LNG system that's got uh, you know it's a pure fluid and's got you know one close to a, a single um, vapor point, we will generate a vapor cavity will form um, at that location within the model. Um, and then when we pressurize the system, driven by the um, the, the velocity change between the interface of the liquid and the vapor as that as that collapses, it will generate uh, a, a rapidly um, applied surge pressure local to where the vapor is collapsing. Um, so we we will simulate that and, and the resultant rate of change of pressure from a vapor collapse uh, incident. Um, we can we can generate the surge pressure, but also the, the piping force results of piping force. So our model will take a conservative approach to modeling vapor um, using a, you know, a single vapor point within within the, the simulator. OK, thank you. Thank you again, Dermot. One more question here. What is the minimum length of pipe work required to see line pack? Um, it, uh, it, that, it that depends on the pipe period, so that's it. The, uh, that's understood. That's where you would kind of start to, to sit down and look at the, the 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 impact of a valve closure and how long it takes for the for the the waves to go from one end to the other. So, if a if a valve closes over um, longer than one pipe period, then line pack generally won't be as it won't be an issue. But anything under under one one pipe period, then you will start to see some some impact of line pack because the pump because the valve will close. Uh, before the wave travels back to the the valve, so it, it, it there's no it's it's a difficult question to answer because there's no true length or, or any particular length you would you would use because it depends on how quick your valve closes. But generally speaking, if a valve is instantaneous, you will see some sort of line pack, um, and the the impact of that line pack will depend on how long your system is. So I mean, in that case, do we always need a hydraulic analysis uh, for our systems, or is there any other simple maybe guidelines to use without the need for a very detailed analysis like the ones you are providing? Yeah, so, so you, you you would do a, a Joukowsky equation, um, uh, but but it, yeah, just to kind of get a feel for for the initial surge pressure pressure rise. Um, um, but it, yeah, that's what it, there's, there's no real rule of thumb to say anything over maybe you put, yeah, any short systems generally you, you would you would think would be okay from a surge point of view. The longer the system becomes, may, maybe anything over 500 meters, then you would start to to think about um, looking at at a, a, a more detailed calculation. Okay, as a rough guide, that's that's yes. great as well. Um, I haven't got uh, more questions here. Um, so I'd like to thank you again for, for your presentation. Um, oh, just a new one coming in. Um, if I can hide this, I'll be able to read it out. In designing pipe supports for out of balance forces, it seems the peak force is important, but also the duration to select a suitable dynamic load factor. Is this something HAL are involved in, or is that uh, then handed over to the pipe designers? Yeah, so the, the the dynamic load factor isn't something that we will we will add to our forces. So we will um, that's something where, where we you know, we will provide the numbers for um, you know, somebody more qualified in terms of stress engineers who will, who will obviously have a better feel for for how they're going to design their supports. But our numbers will will generally don't won't include a, a dynamic load factor. Um, and as, as I said before, we can, depending on the requirement uh, of the stress engineers and how detailed they want to undertake their analysis, we would either provide just a, a maximum force or we can provide the, the force times histories to show 
the rate of, of force rise um, or the, the rate of change of, uh, of that force within the system if a more detailed uh, stress analysis needed to be undertaken. But generally speaking, no, we, we will just give the, the, the true numbers or the bare numbers, if you like, as a result of the pressure change and, veloc and velocity differential. And then a, a, a dynamic load factor will come into play, I guess, during the, the stress calculations. Excellent. Thank you again. Um, some, one more question okay. here. Has anyone, either HAL or others in this uh, webinar, had any experience of assessing uncontrolled pump ramp up or ramp down? For example, variable speed drive failure and so result in surge pressures from sudden acceleration or deceleration of the fluid? Um, so yes, we, we, we will have done some, some generally uh, run down is, is is easier to simulate because you can you can kind of t um, take into account the, um, the the rate at which the 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 speed of the pump will decay. Um, so yes, we, we have we have looked at run, uh, shut down ramp up. Um, it, it, it's a little bit more difficult to 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 simulate. Um, however, we can yes we we we, we can model um, the, the the ramping up of a pump over a very very short period of time. Um, to, to simulate the, the transient impact that that will have on the downstream system. Um, so yeah, that I, I guess you know, there's, there's, a, there's limitations in terms of how quick that pump will, will run up based on the on the motor itself. Um, but uh, yeah, that's something that uh, yeah that, that we we, yeah, we we can simulate and have simulated in the past. Excellent. Thank you, Damit. I mean, I'm not an expert in these things, so I can't really add much to the conversation. Yeah. So apologies for this. But again, um, if, if, if anybody has more questions or I haven't answered them um, or they want a bit, a little bit more detail, just drop me an email and I, I can hopefully be able to provide more examples or, or, or different yeah, situations that we've, we've maybe simulated in the past. Thank you, Damit. Uh, we have a few minutes and one last question probably yes. is, um, do you have any recommendations or rule of rule of thumb for considering if detailed analysis is required for dry riser pump applications? Uh, so yeah, we, we simulate dry riser applications in probably one of the most prevalent will be a, 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 a seawater lift pump or a fire water lift pump. And we do look at them from sort of in the water uh, industry with boreholes and things, but Generally speaking, there's no rule of thumb. I would, yeah, I would say that any anywhere where you're priming a dry riser, um, there's there's going to be a rapid change in in, in flow and pressure quite quickly. Um, so, from a surge point of view, yeah, it's important that you would consider a, a surge analysis. But he, he, also from a a, a, sur a a piping supports point of view, because you're getting such uh, rapid changes in, in in pressures. So I would generally generally speaking, anywhere where you're looking at dr uh, priming dry risers, you would consider uh, doing some sort of slightly more detailed surge analysis. OK, OK, thank you very much. Um, no more questions here and time is also approaching to half past as well. Um, I will also remind people I will eventually send all registrants the PDF of the slides. I will also ask you to fill in an online uh, digital feedback form if you don't mind. Uh, that would really help us develop our events and make them better for you as well. Um, and I'd like to thank Dermot again. Thank you so much. If everybody wants to mute themselves and give Dermot a round of applause, that would be really appreciated as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan. Yeah, th thank you, thank you, Murat, and thank you to your members for giving us the opportunity to uh, to present this uh, this afternoon. Thank you.